This tennis serve will never kick. Can you tell why? You're about to learn the number one mistake tennis players make that keeps their kick serve attempts from ever kicking. Let's dive right in. I recently worked with a solid 4.0 level student and he had a great service motion. He was a great athlete. He was even able to hit 100 mile per hour flat serves, but his second serve had no topspin at all. With one simple exercise, he was able to finally unlock his first topspin serves ever. I'll share it with you in just a few seconds, but first, it's critical to understand exactly what we're trying to achieve and why. There's two reasons why topspin on a serve, especially a second serve, is so desirable. First of all, I want you to track the ball off of Novak's racket here, and as he hits this kick serve, I want you to look at the curve in the ball from contact down into the box, short inside the service line, and then look at the big bounce on the other end up to his opponent. This is critical because the curve allows him to aim higher over the top of the net, have more margin for error between the ball and the net for safety. Then as the ball kicks up and bounces up on the other side, even his six foot five opponent in her catch on the other side is having to jump and then hit the ball at shoulder height. So this combination of safety and margin and challenge and stress for the opponent is a really powerful thing, which is why you should learn how to hit topspin on your serves. All different types of spin in tennis are created when the racket accelerates past the back of the ball in a different direction. So this red arrow here represents the direction of the path of the racket. And right now we're just looking right dead at the back of the ball. So this path of racket is how we create topspin on a ground stroke, a forehand or a backhand. This direction of racket acceleration is how you make backspin, like with a backhand slice. This direction of acceleration is how you make a slice serve in tennis if you're a right-handed player. Now the direction of acceleration is moving from left to right across the back of the ball. And this direction of acceleration is how you hit a kick serve in tennis. The racket is not accelerating straight upwards, which we'll look at some pro examples in a second. It's also not accelerating straight sideways. That would create side spin or slice. Instead, the racket is accelerating up and out to the right if you're a right-handed player. This is a combination of topspin and side spin. Here's what those different deliveries of the racket look like in real life. Here's a topspin ground stroke from Rafael Nadal. Look at how he's meeting the back of the ball with the racket at the point of contact traveling upwards. And that's what creates this rotation of the ball end over end towards the intended target over the top of the ball. Here's a kick serve from Roger Federer. And I want you to look at the point of contact and the angle of his racket right as he comes up and meets the ball right there. Look at how his racket is at about a 45 degree angle, which means at the moment of contact, his racket is accelerating in this direction. He's not actually meeting the ball with his racket horizontal, only creating topspin, but he's also not meeting the ball with his racket pointing up and down, or else he'd be making slice or side spin. Instead, his racket is traveling upwards and also out to the right. And it's the direction of the acceleration as the racket meets the ball that ultimately imparts this spin that we need to curve the ball and then make it bounce up high on the other side. Now check out my student and notice his contact point when he's hitting a second serve. Instead of making contact with the racket at about 45 degrees, it's almost completely vertical, straight up and down at the point of contact, which means as he hits the ball, the racket's momentum and energy is predominantly traveling left to right. So this is going to spin the ball, but it's going to be side spin. It's going to be a slice, and he's not gonna get any of the benefit of that high to low curve of the ball, and he's not gonna get any of the benefit of the high bounce on the other side. If you'd like to turn your forehand into a huge weapon on the court, topspin is critically necessary in order to hit the ball hard and use the same kind of curve that we're talking about with the kick serve to keep the ball in play. And that's exactly what you're gonna learn when you go to forehandpower.com and sign up for the free training. You'll learn some simple drills that you can use to add 15 miles per hour to your forehand in just 15 minutes, including how to hit heavy topspin to keep those big powerful shots in play. So go sign up for free at forehandpower.com. If we look at these two players side by side, you'll notice that my student 
is actually doing several things that are highly recommended by most tennis coaches and a lot of videos on the internet. One is that he's meeting the ball almost exactly at the peak of the toss before the ball can fall very far. That gets recommended a lot. And the second thing is he's reaching up all the way to make contact extending his arm and extending his hand and his racket as high as he can to meet the ball at a high contact point. Well, look at Roger Federer isn't doing either of those things. The ball is dropping significantly from the peak of the toss because he has to let it drop in order to hit the ball with the racket on the way up. It's physically impossible to make topspin if you hit the ball with your arm and your racket extended all the way at its peak position. We can no longer accelerate past the ball vertically if we're all the way up at the top of our vertical reach. There's nowhere up to go from that point. So Roger is actually letting the ball fall a little further than he normally would for a flat serve so that he can hit the ball with the racket traveling on the way up through the point of contact. And while his arm and his hand and his shoulders are certainly extended and high, his racket's position is not all the way up at the top of its reach. He's making contact again with the racket still traveling upwards because that is what creates the topspin on a kick serve. So now that we know what we're physically after with our contact point and the path of the racket and the alignment of the racket at the point of contact, here's the drills that I had my student do to start hitting his first topspin serves. First, I love this field drill because it sets the racket in a horizontal position and you get to feel the sensation of the racket traveling up and down as you roll the ball against the palm of your hand and just get the sensation of what it would be like to meet the ball and make contact with the racket physically traveling upwards. The second drill I had him do was to just take the next logical progression and start rolling the ball up the top of his hand off his fingertips in a vertical direction to roll the ball forwards and again just get a little bit more realistic feel of what it would be like to actually move the racket past the ball in a vertical direction. So now as he does that, look at how the racket is in a horizontal, much more horizontally aligned and he's rolling upwards past the back of the ball. This is what it feels like, albeit exaggerated, which is a good thing typically when you're starting to learn a new skill. This is what it feels like in real life to actually hit a true kick serve. The third exercise I had him do was start with his racket back and turn to the side already in an abbreviated position so that he could just focus on placing the ball in the right place and coming upwards past the back of the ball. Watch the curve on this ball as it comes off his racket. It doesn't go in the box, but look at the curve and look at the bounce on the other side. Now he's starting to get tons of margin with the ball over the top of the net and the ball is diving down into the court and bouncing upwards much higher than what he was hitting before on his second serve, even though he was using tons of effort and energy and acceleration. After just a few minutes of practice, he started hitting full motion serves like the one here on the left. Look at the alignment of the racket as he's meeting the ball. The racket is still on its way upwards versus this is his original second serve. Look at how much more straight up and down the racket is on this one. So as he hits this ball on the right, notice how his racket is almost all the way up at the peak of his reach. And so watch the ball's trajectory on the other side. As it goes over the net, it's got very little margin over the top of the net. And then as it bounces up, we're gonna pause at the peak of the bounce. That's right about here. And now this one on the left, watch the difference. How now his racket is still traveling upwards as he hits the ball. That is what makes topspin. His racket's not at 45 degrees like it is for Roger Federer and all the other world-class players out there hitting massive kick serves, but he's directionally moving in the right direction. He's got lots more practice to do to really master this, but he's moving in the right direction now. And most excitingly, watch the difference now as this serve bounces and comes up off the court. Look at how much higher the ball is getting up above the top of the net. It's twice as high above the top of the net, and this is his first attempt trying this. There's lots more improvements to come. If you'd like to continue learning about the kick serve, we'll put a video on the screen right now. That's a deep dive into kick serve technique and drills and training. Go check it out. This lesson was helpful. 
Do me a favor and click that like button. Thank you so much for supporting my coaching. I'll catch you in the next lesson.